The title of my presentation is a 30-year-old startup. It sounds a bit strange. Uh, the company is only 30 years old, um, but we still operate with a very innovative spirit, like a startup a bit. You know, if you grow very fast as a company, you don't have time to build up huge overhead, and therefore the way you operate is still pretty similar to a startup, and that helps, of course, to drive innovation. So I will be speaking a bit about the history of Emirates, history of Dubai because Dubai as well grew very quickly, very fast. But basically to set the stage, to better understand why do we do certain things, you know, we do them, particularly in IT. So uh, Emirates, as you know, you know, is also disrupting um, the traditional airline model. Uh, that's a bit part of my theme. And then I will focus a bit on what are the challenges ahead of us, you know, things that we heard today as well about new technology, Internet of Things, connected devices, what our customers, um, will expect from us, but one of my themes as well is about what will future employees expect from us. You know, the Gen Y, Gen Zs, um, who will enter the workforce very soon, you know, they will expect something different from a company as a work environment, as you know, we, we have known in the past. I typically use a bit of an analogy when I watch my 12-year-old daughter, how she does homework, how she uses technology, and thinking that, you know, um, in 10 years, five to ten years she will be entering the workforce and uh, the way she works, she interacts with her classmates, you know, that pattern will probably have to apply to corporates as well and that's a, a big challenge, we have to get prepared for it. The company was founded at that time when Gulf Air, who was the airline who was supposed to serve all you know, the Middle East and the GCC countries, basically pulled out of Dubai and said we're going to concentrate on Muscat, um, Bahrain and I think Abu Dhabi and, and removed all flights from Dubai where the rule of Dubai said you know um, air transportation connecting Dubai to the rest of the world is just so important to get our economy going and, and uh, you know, the growth of the cities depend on it so that's when they decided to create their own airline. I don't think there was much more behind it unfortunately. Um, but that also left the leaders of the company the freedom to decide, you know, what they want to do out of the company. And the company was started in '85, you know, with 10 million dollars starting capital, um, no further subsidies, support from the state whatsoever, and has now merged into, you know, the largest international airline and uh, spanning all continents. And uh, as you mentioned before, disrupting actually the classical airline industry. If you look at the classical travel patterns earlier, you know, a lot, the most of the traffic from North America to Asia was always going through Europe. You know, and that is changing. That is changing. 70% at my time when I was at Swiss Air, 70% of the passengers who boarded in, the, in North America were just transiting through Europe to Asia or Africa. And now, you know, we connect these continents directly. You don't have to stop in Europe anymore. So Europe, the European hubs, are just being made irrelevant, redundant. And I think that's why a lot of the traditional European airlines are, are afraid of what we are doing, what Emirates is doing. Oh, it's absolutely crucial. It's absolutely crucial. And, you know, luckily, for me as well, is that our airline president, Tim Clark, he absolutely sees the necessity and the the criticality of IT. You know, he is completely hooked up that what he wants to achieve with the company, you know, his vision about the future will only be achieved by massive use of technology. You know, what we have seen so far with Emirates is only the beginning. The president has a vision on where he wants to take the company, um, which is very visionary, very exciting, and only possible with very strong IT enablement. So, you know, that's what we're working on now. I think what we've seen so far, so far, in terms of use of IT was more, you know, the plain vanilla standard stuff. Yes, we had a few interesting innovations, but I think the exciting stuff is, is, is only yet to come. So, uh, um, yeah, I mean, as I, as I said, IT, IT is absolutely crucial. In an operation like an airline, if IT doesn't run, you know, no aircraft is taking off anymore. So it's yeah. absolutely mission critical. Since I joined the company, I restructured IT twice. 
the first time, and I'm, I'll talk about that tomorrow as well, after I joined, because I basically found a complete, complete chaos, completely chaotic organization, uh, infrastructure, strategy, not existing, and so on. So I had to do a radical change right after I joined. And then six years later, and uh, when the world has moved on and the company has quadrupled in size, basically, you know, we had to step back and ask ourselves, what we defined six years ago, is it still appropriate or do we need to reinvent ourselves? And I think this is key as well. You know, you also have to disrupt yourselves, your organization once in a while, you know, as we heard today from Nokia, in order to be able to cope with the challenges of the future. So in 2013, so last year, basically, we went through a completely different um, restructuring again, radical, completely rebuilt all of IT. And the one tomorrow came more because the Emirates' vision was hello tomorrow, is the big slogan. And we also have Denata. Denata is the third largest airport services company that is also part of Emirates Group, which is ground handling, catering, a travel business in there, uh, logistics, which grew very fast also about through acquisitions. And their slogan or their strategy was um, one Denata. So because we as IT, we serve the airlines as well as the Denata businesses, we sort of amalgamated the two slogans and made it one tomorrow. So it's you know, nothing to do about technology or whatever. It was just showing that we as the IT organization of the group, we actually fuel both of these businesses and their growth and their success. So that's the story behind it. The vision basically is that Tim Clark, the president, wants to get the Emirates brand at a same level as, you know, a Facebook, an Amazon, a Google. So, you know, if you think search, you go Google. If you think shop, you go Amazon. If you think um, communication or whatever, you go Facebook. He wants to get Emirates at the level you think travel, you, you think Emirates. And that's sort of the mission of, you know, the next big strategy that we're driving driving to and you know, all only possible and enabled through through IT. So we run a series of workshops and define what that means, what the future of travel will look like in 10, 15 years, which is of course far beyond just air travel. So Emirates will not just be an airline, but we'll more focus on end-to-end -end travel experience. We already, you know, since we exist, we focus more on an experience, a travel experience for the customers is not just, you know, a means to go from A to B, but it's also an experience. That's why we invest an awful lot into the product. What we offer on board, what we even offer on ground, you know, is far beyond what other airlines do. You know, first business class passengers, we pick them up with a limousine at home. We drop them again at their destination hotel, whatever it is. We have great lounges in all the airports we fly to. Um, what we do on board as well, you know, we have uh, in 380, we have a, a bar lounge, we have shower, spa, bathrooms for first class passenger. Um, uh, it's all about the experience, the travel experience. And, you know, if you take that and extend it even further and say it is not just about, you know, the means to go from A to B, but anything that covers your travel needs, you can get a bit of an idea on where we're heading to. It's much more than just air travel, and that's sort of the next big thing that um, we will aspire. And of course, that, that requires a much closer interaction with the end consumer, the customers. In the classical airline model, you know, 70 to 80 percent of the airline tickets are sold through intermediaries, travel agencies who typically use these big GDS as global distribution systems, Amadeus Saber. Um, Using these channels to distribute your product, you know, our product, which is, you know, a ticket ultimately, you don't even know who you're selling it to. You know, you get a request through the GDS system, quote me, you know, a ticket from A to B. You don't know who the customer is, you know, you don't know how many times he flew with you before and so on, because that's all shielded off by the GDS and travel agency. In order to better serve our customer and to be more um, you know, responsive and to be able to offer tailor-made products and, and offerings to the customers, we need to get direct access to the customer. Therefore, we will have to disintermediate these intermediaries. And we'll invest a lot in direct distribution, in going direct and being able to reach our customers directly. You know, it's a bit also like, I typically use the analogy with the music industry. You know, when you look how a record shop looked like in the 80s, 
in the 90s, you know, it just, the only thing that changed was from vinyl records, it was, it was CDs. Um, but if you look at record shops now, most of them went out of business, or they just sell accessories, you know, iPad covers and stuff. But they don't sell music anymore because everything is being done online, you know, with the app stores and whatever. But even, even iTunes, to me, is an outdated model, you know, because new generation, they don't buy music anymore, they subscribe. So you have the Spotify's, the Deezer's and so on. So if you don't reinvent yourselves and seek new ways of distributing your product, you run the risk of getting out of business. And that's a bit the theme that we're working on as well. I mean, I am personally a, str a strong believer in open source because I see open source and you know, the crowdsource they come to it where a lot of innovation is happening. Uh, and when we, of course, we use internally, we use a lot of, a lot of open source wherever possible. But it's, to me, it's not just about using open source software, it's about can we adapt that model of crowdsourcing to create system, apps, whatever you want to call it, who add value to the end consumer, and rather than doing everything in-house. You know, the old classical um, model is, you know, you develop your own software or you let it develop by a third party, you keep it for you, you want to keep the IPR, you don't open it up uh, because you want to be in control. I think the new model is completely different. And we heard it today as well in one of the presentations, you know, when, when iPhone was launched, Steve Jobs said, these are the 12 apps, period. And why iPhones and Android are successful is not because it's a particularly good hardware or operating system. It's because of the value of all these apps that thousands and thousands of, of developers developed and add value to it, uh, that ecosystem. So if we can, as a company, use such an approach and say, you know, we, because we don't know ultimately what the customer wants to the last bits and pieces, so let's just open up our systems. Let's you know publish our APIs or whatever, and let the community add to our core system whatever they feel could add value. And uh, I don't think large companies have ever done that in sort of big extent. But this is something something we're seriously looking at. I wrote a paper about four years ago about how could we possibly use crowdsourcing and open source to develop business applications, basically a new reservation system which the industry in the past has always failed to sort of move away from these old legacy systems into new technology because they all use the classical traditional, you know, do it all in one go, hundreds of software engineers approach and it always failed. So that's why, you know, the whole topic about crowdsourcing and um, open source is something that I strongly believe in. And again, you know, funny enough, I mentioned my daughter earlier, when I, when I observe how my daughter does homework, you know, they have a topic and they need to write something about the topic. So she either does it on the iPad directly or does it on paper, takes a picture and puts it up on Instagram. And within two hours, seven, eight, nine of her classmates took it, added to it, enhanced it and put it back onto Instagram. So after two hours, they have a result that nobody individually has ever been able to achieve because they do homework and crowdsourcing, you know, and they realize they, that generation knows that the more I share, the more I get back. When we went to school, we did our homeworks ourselves. We didn't want to share it because we want to do better than the others. I see the new generation are completely different the other way around. And um, you know, that's again the theme that I mentioned earlier. We have to think about how, as a company, will we embrace that capability into our company? You know, when these people enter the workforce, um, we can't tell them, no, you can't use Instagram because, you know, SharePoint is our standard because that's what makes them efficient. So we have to completely rethink also our security policies, our HR policies and so on, because otherwise we will not be able to attract these talents. I mean, I mean as I mentioned, you know, I think the, the, the key vision is in 10 years, if you want to travel, you go check Emirates. Whether it will be on a pad or on the web or whatever, doesn't really matter. But sort of that connection that, you know, you think travel, you think Emirates. As I, if I go online and search something, I think Google automatically, you know, sort of that association. And then that we are capable of providing you an end-to-end -end experience with all the nitty-gritty details you need, you know, which is far beyond purely, purely uh, the air travel. And that doesn't mean that we need to provide the service. You know, we will have to heavily depend on an ecosystem of partners 
that uh, we work together to offer you that experience.